Senator Jim Boyd, who's with us, Representative uh, Will Robinson, and County Commissioner Kevin Van Austinbridge. I'd also like to thank uh, Florida DEP. They have had uh, their folks on site both at Piney Point and the port monitoring the water discharge. Uh, in addition, we have the U.S. Coast Guard here with us in the uh, EOC, Florida Department of Emergency Management, the Florida Department of Transportation, the State and Regional Incident Management Team, and the, uh, we've got uh, additional uh, law enforcement, our sheriffs are here. We have our hardworking staff that have been activated all week, and as you heard, working through the night, Manatee County Public Safety, Emergency Management, our public works and, and parks. And As you know, the situation has been escalating over the past 24 hours uh, to the point where we have been working with our partners in Hillsborough County with the administrator up there. Uh, we have uh, recognized that we need to ensure that traffic area maintains fuel in, in the gas stations. Uh, the governor, as you heard, has given full support. In addition, he's sending additional resources down to us, including pumps, uh, uh, cranes, other uh, heavy equipment that are going to be necessary uh, should we experience that full breach. Uh, I would just like to reiterate that, that those residents in the area, if you have not evacuated, please do so. Uh, we in the county are doing everything to mitigate the risk to the various businesses in the area. The Sheriff's Department helped uh, with sandbagging the, uh, the gas plant, which supplies natural gas to FPNL. Uh, so it's, it's really an all hands on with the, the situation as it continues to escalate will be continuing to elevate the, the functions here at the EOC. Uh, with that, uh, we'll open it up for uh, any questions you may have, and we'll ensure, oh, here you go. You're going to handle it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Hello. My name is Shannon Herbin. I'm with the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. Ensure that the relief people, um, our number one priority obviously is the protection of public health and safety. Um, and as Director Sauer and County Administrator just said, Governor DeSantos has declared a local state of emergency, and that will, of course, ensure that resources are available for all response and recovery. All right, now we'll open up for questions. Can you, can you describe what a full Uh, right now, it appears that the flow is going the direction that is planned. Uh, we have some uh, charts and maps that we'll be making available shortly as those keys are, are, are released. Uh, we are talking about should the, the breach where you see on the side wall, should that create a, 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 a substantial opening where we've got around now we probably have about 500 to 600 million gallons still in the retention uh, pond that it would probably escape out. Uh, fortunately, there are areas, low-lying areas, that would absorb some of that. So we're probably looking at an initial sheet of a flow, which would then migrate to the north and follow the terrain down into the bay. Uh, we're that. Uh, and, and as you've seen, uh, we've been actively moving uh, in addition to the 22,000 gallons per minute uh, that is going through the siphon pipes down to the port. Uh, they have additional pumps that are pumping out. I think it's around uh, 1,500 uh, gallons a minute. In addition to that, as you know, the governor is bringing in additional pumps. The folks from HRK have, have left the EOC to go up to refuel the pumps that are currently pumping. Every, every volume of water that would go into the surrounding uh, land. When you say, Dr. Hopes, if I could, if 
you would repeat the question so that all the reporters can hear it, please. Perfect, thanks. Thank you. But when you say um, unsuccessful last night, what exactly did you mean? Uh, the question was what, what efforts uh, last night were unsuccessful. Uh, there was a combination of, of additional commercial equipment and, and county staff operating heavy equipment, uh, uh, dump trucks, front end loaders, excavators to, to pile uh, earthen material at the area of the breach, which was much smaller. Uh, yesterday evening and then in addition brought in a substantial amount of rock that we were able to uh, garner with uh, Senator Boyd's help uh, with mosaic that had rock stored at the port uh, and so the attempt was to kind of plug the hole in the dam uh, and uh, if, if video is I think video is out there showing when they reached a point where they were about to celebrate and then it blew through uh, you've got an immense volume of water. You've got 77 acres, and I think it goes up to 25 feet deep. So when you think about opening the drain in the bottom of your bathtub, where you have a minuscule amount of water, so you can imagine the opening that you see in those films with that kind of volume and depth of water putting pressure on that. And so you can imagine the earlier question was, what are we talking about a full breach? We're talking about the potential of about 600 million gallons within a matter of seconds and minutes leaving that retention pool and going around the surrounding area. Fortunately, the population density is relatively low, extremely low. It's a lot of agricultural area, and there are some residual borrow pits that still have capacity to absorb a, a bulk of that. Uh, we've been looking at possible engineering to move some of that rock over to where the road is washing out to continue to maintain the diversion so that some of our key agricultural areas may be protected from that water, keeping in mind that some of the water in that pool uh, is, is, is salt water, uh, which doesn't go very well with our potato crops and things like that. So, so what, what's being done now? Is, is this, you just let it go and kind of let it happen? Not no, absolutely not. Uh, the question was, so what happens now? You know, what are we doing? Uh, there, there are still key engineers on site. Uh, as I mentioned, we still have full siphoning. There are two siphon pipes that leave the pool and go down and literally empty out at the port into a, a, a substantial drainage ditch, which has conduits going underneath the railroad tracks and then emptying in a pipe uh, to the seawall. And so that is, I think it's 22,000 gallons a minute. It's been running at full flow. I think we left uh, yesterday afternoon about 2 o'clock, and they opened up the second pipe. So when you think of that volume of water, now that being said, it's still going to take 10 to 12 days at, at 22,000 per minute. Out of there in a controlled fashion. Uh, in addition to looking at possibly flooding some of the existing Piney Point low areas so that at least the, this material stays on Piney Point grounds uh, with as much volume as possible. Well, I think if you look at the, the current, that's a breach. with the majority of the water currently leaving under a controlled fashion. And, and that has gone and uh, And so that's the control. So the, the more time we have for controlled release, the le lesser, the, 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 the minimization of the uncontrolled. The risk that we're dealing with right now is that uncontrolled release. And if you think of the, the composition, there is a, a, a very thick vinyl liner that you think of it as a, a soft swimming pool. And the, they rightly identified that the initial leak in that liner was in the, the base of the southeast or the east-southeast corner of that pool. So now what you see is you see that opening. So the, the concern is, is, is if that liner continues to unzip, so to speak, 
because it's probably at a seam that when that opens up, you will see the, the, the crevice where the breach has occurred continue to unzip and, and break that rock away. And, and so we're all just uh, trying to ensure that we have an accurate projection of the flow and where we need to, to mitigate so that we still control, even with an uncontrolled breach, we still have some level of control of where the water uh, is directed. On, on the Piney Point HRK currently for overflow that can absorb some capacity. Uh, the question was how many ponds are in the area. If you look at the area, the aerial, uh, you have the uh, uh, Buckeye Road uh, 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 area to the south with those borrow pits, the Buckeye borrow pits, and I think there are about three there. Uh, you also will notice in the aerial that I, I believe it's to the southwest, there's some additional area. And then you have a substantial lowland area, almost like a cypress kind of swamp uh, to, I believe, the southeast. So those areas are probably, would be probably effective at protecting the south so that the flow can continue as we expect uh, to follow the, the, the contour to the bay. Right. Uh, total. So among those three ponds, you're almost looking at a billion gallons at Piney Point. If we maintain control, uh, the concern is that should you have a full breach, think of a dam opening up, that runs the risk of destabilizing the walls of the other area. So when we look at the risk factor, the risk factor is really a potential release of nearly a billion gallons. The, the, the material in the other two pools, keep in mind, right now the, the, the volume is basically salt water. With, we saw ducks yesterday. There are snooks swimming in there. I mean, it's sustaining wildlife. That's not the case for the other two pools. Okay, so the total now, because we've been able to discharge a couple hundred million, so now we're down to 800 million gallons. It's total, 800 total. Million the total in the two large ponds is 800 million? Let's just say it is a heck of a lot of stuff. It's 800 on site. Total 800 on site. Okay, total gallons on site, give or take a few gallons. So, so the question is, any livestock that's left? Uh, I don't think we're talking of a Katrina level of flooding. We're, we're probably talking about a few feet, an initial sheet of water, and then, and then a kind of flood, a flowing of it. So, uh, you know, hopefully, and, and I don't think we're thinking like a 30-foot tidal wave, like when Katrina went on the shore of Mississippi. So uh, livestock. Yeah, that should be. I mean, what, what's at risk right now is water that is sustaining a pretty interesting ecosystem. Uh, some people I heard were like sneaking in there and like a, it's, it's like a stocked pond. Well, let's say that we've been trying to contain this water on 20 something years. Uh, it's, it's what is being displaced currently is not as bad as what we are trying to maintain does not leave Piney Point in an uncontrolled way. Uh, that is not our, we're, we we're controlling the, the question was penalties for the storage facilities. That, that is a whole uh, other issue that's between the state and I'm not prepared to answer that question. And you mentioned this is something that you guys have been working on for several years. Why is it surprising now? Why is action happening right now? I'm coming back to her question. Um, so the state, the Florida Department of Environmental Protection is prepared to um, and dedicated to the full enforcement 
for any damages to our state's natural resources. So that is definitely happening. It's just right now our top priority is ensuring the ceasing of the breach and the um, of everyone in the area. Uh, so the question is what uh, regarding the environmental impact of the two remaining first let me clarify we got accurate numbers so in the the uh, the pond that is currently being uh, offloaded about 480 million gallons Uh, the other two areas do have, uh, I would say, waste that would be less conducive to life on land and, and life in the sea. What, what does that mean? What, uh, it means that it has, that the pH uh, would have, in order, in order to safely discharge it, it would need to be treated for a pH, reduce the ammonia content, uh, other other you know material you to update uh, the press and the public uh, as uh, the events uh, continue to progress and change. Uh, thank you all. I just wanted to let you know that we really are not scheduling another briefing this afternoon. We'll probably send out uh, just a press release, but we'll probably have another one tomorrow. Thank you. In addition to that, uh, the uh, DEP is monitoring all of the water, both on site and being discharged uh, 24 hours a day, they're sampling. All right, thank you. Breaking news on WFLA Now. Here's